Hi everyone, and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. And recently I made a video about the history of Pringles. And one of the things that came up while researching for that video were all these different recipes for cooking and baking with potato chips, including this one for potato chip cinnamon rolls. So today I'm taking a look back at recipes with potato chips and trying my hand at making potato chip cinnamon rolls. Although potato chips are ubiquitous in American culture today, they were once more of a novelty food. If you wanted potato chips, you had to find a restaurant or bakery that served them or make them yourself. By the 1880s, small businesses were making chips and selling them to local stores, making potato chips more accessible. Customers could go up to the counter of a general store and the clerk would scoop potato chips from a bulk container, such as a glass case or a barrel, into a bag. But the problem with these potato chips is that they didn't stay fresh for very long. If you were unlucky, you might get the crushed and stale chips from the bottom of the barrel. And even if you got the freshest, most crisp chips, grease, humidity, and exposure to light would cause the chips to get soggy and rancid if you left them around too long. So potato chips were meant to be eaten quickly or freshened up in the oven. In the 1920s and 1930s, potato chip makers began putting their chips in heat-sealed, moisture-proof bags, which helped to keep them fresher longer. Over the next several decades, continuous improvements to packaging meant that chips could both stay fresh and crisp on store shelves and in the pantry. Once meant to be eaten the day of purchase, potato chips could now be kept on hand for snacking and for cooking. Now some of the earliest recipes I was able to find with potato chips as an ingredient were potato chip canapes, or putting cheese, meat, or fish paste on top of potato chips and serving them as hors d'oeuvres. In the 1930s, housewives were advised to prepare potato chip canapes right before serving to prevent them from becoming soggy. Another suggestion was to set out the ingredients on a buffet table and let guests choose their own potato chip canapé toppings, a kind of predecessor to the iconic chips and dip snack in the following decades. In the 1940s, potato chip casserole seems to have been the new rage. As one newspaper noted, everyone is so fond of this appetizing tidbit that it's excellent mealtime psychology to heap crushed potato chips as the final layer over creamy seafood, cheese, eggs, or vegetable blends in the baking dish. A favorite from this time was tuna potato chip casserole, which featured crushed potato chips both in and on top of the dish. By the 1950s, Americans were eating more potato chips than ever before. Potato chip consumption had increased more than 200% between 1949 and 1959. And with its rise came more potato chip recipes, from new chip and dip combinations to potato chip crusted fried chicken. These recipes were part of a larger push by chip manufacturers like Wise Potato Chips to find new uses for the snack food. This 1957 Recipes That Pep Up Meals with Wise Potato Chips features over 60 recipes with potato chips as an ingredient for any and all of your meals. This recipe booklet was free with the purchase of any bag of Wise Potato Chips or any other Wise Potato product, presumably so you'd buy more Wise Potato Chips to make any of its recipes. As a side note, Wise had a long-running ad campaign about pepping up your meals with potato chips. The ads may have been the inspiration for the Wise Owl's mascot's name, which was Peppy. Looking through the book, one of the things that stood out to me was the use of potato chips in breakfast recipes. Although I can think of several examples of potatoes as breakfast foods like diced potatoes or hash browns, I don't usually think of potato chips as something you eat for breakfast. So today, I want to put one of these wise potato chip recipes for breakfast to the test. And I love cinnamon rolls, so I definitely want to try the potato chip cinnamon rolls recipe. I'm not sure I would have ever thought to pair potato chips with cinnamon rolls, but while I was researching for this video, I did see that Lay's Canada had a cinnamon bun flavor in 2014 as part of Lay's Do Us a Flavor contest. So someone else clearly thought this was a good idea. And I could really see the sweet and salty combination working really well together. Now the only cinnamon rolls I have ever made come in a can, so this is an entirely new experience for me. Luckily this recipe uses a hot roll mix, so it isn't completely from scratch. But I'm a little nervous about getting the dough to rise correctly. So let's see how it goes. To start we need two ingredients, hot roll mix and, of course, wise potato chips. 
To make the dough, you start by following the instructions on the box of hot rolls mix. And this box mix has instructions specifically for making cinnamon rolls, so I'm going to use that. You first add the dry ingredients, which are the mix and the yeast. And here's where the Wise Potato Chips recipe book wants you to change up the hot rolls recipe by adding 2 thirds cup of crushed potato chips. You then continue to follow the hot rolls recipe, adding 3 tablespoons of sugar to make the dough sweet. And mix all the dry ingredients together. After that, you add your wet ingredients, starting with hot water. The instructions are very specific about the temperature of the water, needing to be between 120 and 130 degrees, because you want all the liquid ingredients to be warm to keep the yeast active. Next, you add two tablespoons of softened butter and one room temperature egg. I used my mixer to combine and knead the dough, but the instructions say you can mix the ingredients together by hand until the dough starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl and then knead for about five minutes. Once the dough is smooth and tacky, but not sticky to the touch, place it in a bowl, cover, and let rise for five minutes. I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but I can still see little flakes of potato chips, which I think is a good sign. I wasn't sure if the potato chips would end up completely dissolving after I mixed everything together. Now that I have my dough, I can return to the Wise Potato Chips recipe. The next step is to roll the dough into a rectangle about a fourth of an inch thick on a lightly floured surface. And now the fun part. You spread the dough with two tablespoons of softened butter, sprinkle with one half cup brown sugar, and one teaspoon cinnamon. The instructions say to then roll up the dough like a jelly roll and cut into one inch pieces. And look, they do actually have a swirl, so, so far so good. At this point, you start to prepare the rolls for baking. The instructions say to spread two tablespoons of butter in a 7 by 11 inch pan and then sprinkle one half cup brown sugar on the bottom of the pan. Now I ended up doing the next step two different ways. The first time I spread out the cinnamon rolls between two 7 by 11 inch metal pans because I didn't think all the rolls would fit on one. For this one, I placed the brown sugar only under the rolls instead of covering the entire bottom of the pan because I didn't want to end up with just a bunch of burnt brown sugar. The second time, I used a 9 by 12 inch glass baking dish and sprinkled brown sugar across the entire bottom and then placed the rolls side by side in the pan so that they were touching. And now comes, in my opinion, the hardest part of the whole process, getting the dough to rise. The Hot Rolls Mix recommends you let the dough rise in a warm place between 80 and 90 degrees for 30 minutes. Now, I know from watching the Great British Baking Show that there are such things as proving drawers and that some ovens have them on the bottom, but mine does not. So instead, I'm just going to cover the rolls and let them rise on their own. The goal is to get them to double in size or bulk. And after about an hour and a half, I would definitely say the rolls have increased in size. And these are just about ready to go into the oven. The last thing we need is to heat 2 thirds cup of brown sugar and 1 cup water to make a syrup. Then pour the hot syrup over the rolls evenly. And finally, we bake the cinnamon rolls at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. And here's how my first attempt turned out. I'm relieved to say that they look like cinnamon rolls. You're supposed to flip them over and let the syrup flow down the sides, but you can see the syrup formed more of a thick caramel-like coating on the bottom. Because I baked these rolls in a metal pan, they only needed maybe 16 minutes in the oven and they cooked much faster than I was expecting. And the dough tastes fine, but the syrup isn't, well, very syrupy. I would say that these rolls are overbaked. In my second batch, I used a glass baking dish and baked for 20 minutes. The syrup was much more viscous this time, which is really good, but the tops of the rolls lost a lot of their definition. I think it's possible I didn't roll them as tightly as my first batch. They have a really nice color, but they don't really look like cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to make the cinnamon rolls one more time using the 9 by 12 inch glass baking dish and see if I can get to a happy medium between my first two attempts. This time I cut the rolls slightly smaller and proved them for only an hour. I also cooked them for about 22 minutes, which was longer than my first two attempts. Okay, moment of truth. Will the syrup run down the sides? This is exactly what I was hoping for. The cinnamon rolls came out of the pan really easily, and the syrup was still runny enough to cover the tops and sides of the rolls. 
As a final touch, I'm going to top the cinnamon rolls with more crushed potato chips. The instructions don't actually say to do this, but when you look at the photo of the rolls, it looks to me like there are little pieces of chips in the syrup. And it couldn't hurt, right? Let's see how they taste. Okay, so the cinnamon rolls themselves are pretty good. They kind of remind me of the canned caramel rolls that Pillsbury used to have. Does anyone else remember those? I'm not sure if they're still around. Anyway, I would say that the flavors are mainly caramel and cinnamon. And they are very, very sweet. I can definitely taste the brown sugar that was on the bottom of the pan. But what I'm not getting is much potato chip flavor. Even when I eat the crushed chips in the syrup, it just tastes like a regular cinnamon roll. Honestly, it's a little disappointing. I was hoping that since these were potato chip cinnamon rolls from a potato chip recipe book, the chip flavor would come through more. But I'm not really sure it added anything to this recipe at all. That said, this was a fun recipe to try, and I would definitely make cinnamon rolls again. Maybe minus the potato chips. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the look back at potato chip recipes. If you like this video and would like to see me try more vintage recipes, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.